I hold in my hand the first high quality virtual reality headset that is portable and doesn't require any wires. Yes, there is Google Cardboard, but trust me, that doesn't hold a candle to what this can do. On top of that, this has the highest resolution of any other virtual reality headset. As if that wasn't enough to convince you of this headset's awesomeness, this was created as a team effort by both Samsung and Oculus. That's right, Oculus, the creators of the Oculus Rift, the leading virtual reality headset for desktop gaming. I'm Eric from Techisode TV, and this is the Samsung Gear VR unboxing and initial setup. We're going to be taking a look at the Samsung Gear VR Innovator Edition. So here's a look at the front and back of the box. If you want to see that in more detail, you can pause the video. And go ahead and pull the top cover off. Another box here. And this box is a replacement foam face piece, as well as a getting started guide. But don't worry about this because I'm going to be covering everything you need to know in this video. So put that back in there. And now we've got the Gear VR carrying case. So this is a very durable case. Uh, it's very hard, hard to flex, so it's definitely going to keep your Gear VR safe in here. You've got a carrying handle and a zipper to open it with, so we'll go ahead and open it up. Now you've got your Gear VR itself, as well as a little section for a controller if you have one, as well as a little pouch over here that's Velcroed. And you have your micro SD card and SD card adapter for your micro SD card. And on your micro SD card is all of your demo material for the Gear VR. So I'm going to put this back in here. And now the last thing is a microfiber cloth to clean the lenses with on the Gear VR. That's it for the initial unboxing. Now let's take a closer look at the Gear VR itself. Taking a closer look at the Gear VR itself, we see that it is completely covered with protective tape. So much so that I have to montage my way through taking it off. But before I do that, I want to quickly point out that there are green tabs on just about every piece of tape to make it easier for you to locate and remove the tape. Time for the montage. Alright, now that I've successfully removed the 8 pounds of tape, let's take a look at how to put the head strap on. Just remove from the goggles and align this hook with the metal bar in this slot here. Once you get the hook wrapped around the bar, just give it a tug and the strap will lock into place. You likely won't hear a snap, but you will feel it press into place. Now just disconnect this strap, push it through this ring on the back, and velcro it back together. Here's a look at the fully assembled headset. For buttons, sensors, and adjustments, the Gear VR has a touchpad, a mechanical back button, mechanical volume rockers, a proximity sensor so the Gear VR knows whether or not you have the headset on, as well as a focus adjustment wheel. There are also various self-explanatory straps to adjust the fit of the Gear VR on your head. Here's a look at what's behind the cover on the Gear VR. On the left side, you can see the micro USB port that the Note 4 plugs into. Samsung did a great job with the design on this. You hardly need to try to line the Note 4 up at all when putting it in because the micro USB connector moves easily to accommodate connecting the Note 4 at any angle. At the opposite end is a push button to eject the Note 4. Taking a closer look, you can see two little arms that push away from the Gear VR to remove the Note 4. Below the eject button is a groove to make room for any headphone that you want to plug into your Note 4 while using the Gear VR. Fun fact before I put the front cover back on. Wearing the Gear VR without a Note 4 makes you look super attractive. Putting the cover back on brings up another point. The cover can go on in both orientations. This is a nice touch because it makes putting the cover back on very quick and easy. Time to set up your Note 4 to work with the Gear VR. The first thing you need to do is remove the front cover and connect your Note 4 to the headset. If your volume is on, you'll hear a voice prompt say this. Welcome to your Samsung Gear VR. To start the setup process, remove your mobile device and install the required applications on it. 
If you didn't have the volume on, there would be some text when you put the headset on that told you to take the Note 4 out to start the setup process. Once you remove your phone from the headset, the setup process will start. The first page just notifies you that you need to be connected to either Wi-Fi or a mobile network in order to complete the setup process and that you may be charged for any data overages if you're using a mobile network. You'll now be walked through a series of downloads and user agreements that basically sum up to you agreeing that if you somehow die by using the Gear VR, it's not Samsung's fault. While that's all downloading, I'll mention the warnings that are actually important. The first of which is that kids under the age of 13 should not use the Gear VR because it can be detrimental to their visual development. The second is that you need to sit down when using the Gear VR, especially for the first time. I've had about a dozen people try this on, and just about every one of them became disoriented for a few seconds when they first put the headset on. The rest are obvious things, like don't drive while using the headset. Don't use it if you have epilepsy. Take it off if you start feeling nauseated or get a headache, and other things like that. A few other things I want to mention are that you cannot put the Note 4 into the Gear VR with a case on. The only phone that works with the Gear VR is the Note 4. Not even the Note Edge will work with this headset. Some other phones will fit, but nothing will happen when you connect the phone to the Gear VR. You won't even get a notification on your phone informing you that something is trying to connect. You also can't wear the headset with glasses on, but the focus adjustment covers a pretty wide range of vision. Another important thing to point out is that some screen protectors can distort the images when you have the Gear VR on, especially if the screen protector has scrapes or bubbles on it. Alright, back to the setup process. As you can see, these downloads take a while, so I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Once the downloads finish, you'll be asked to create an Oculus account. There's also an option to log in if you already have an Oculus account for some reason. I don't have an Oculus account, so I have to create a new one. When creating a new account, you'll have to agree to even more terms of service that rival the Bible in length. Once you agree to all of that, you'll need to enter your email, then an Oculus ID that will be viewable to the public, as well as your real name which can only be viewed by Oculus. After that, you need to create a password for your account. Then select your country and enter your birthday. Once that's done, Oculus will send you an email, which may take a few minutes, so you'll have to be patient. When you receive the email, click the link provided. When you tap the link, you'll get an option to open it with the Oculus app. Make sure you choose the Oculus app to continue the setup process. The link will take you to a page within the Oculus app to download three awesome Oculus apps. The first is Oculus Cinema, which allows you to literally sit in a giant triple screen movie theater, watch a movie on the moon, or even watch a movie at a simple home theater. That may sound a bit gimmicky to some people, but I really can't begin to describe how incredible the experience is. This is certainly not just a glorified version of Google Cardboard. The second app is Oculus 360 Photos. This app allows you to get inside some 360 degree photospheres provided by Oculus. If you aren't familiar with what a photosphere is, just go on Google Maps and go to Street View. Those are photospheres. The last app is Oculus 360 Videos. This is simply a photosphere taken at 30 frames per second, so you'll be able to watch things like a helicopter tour of Iceland where you can look around in any direction while the helicopter is flying through Iceland. Just tap install and all three apps will download. While these are downloading, I'll take another moment to give you guys a bit more information about the Gear VR. First, if you get a call while using the Gear VR, a notification will float in front of you telling you who is calling. If you look at the notification, you have the option to reject the phone call. If you want to answer the phone call, you'll have to remove the Note 4 from the Gear VR. All of your other notifications will also come through as floating pop-ups with relevant information. However, you won't be able to interact with those notifications at all. They just pop up for a few seconds, then disappear. Once the Oculus apps finish installing, you'll be prompted to insert the microSD card that came with your Oculus if you haven't already done that. If you currently don't have any microSD card installed, you can just remove the back cover from your Note 4 and insert the microSD card from Oculus. If you do have a microSD card installed, then you'll first need to go to Settings, General, Storage, scroll to the bottom, and select Unmount. Once the microSD card is unmounted, you can take the back cover off of your Note 4 and remove the microSD card you currently have installed. To remove the microSD card, just put your finger on it and press up towards the top of the phone. Now just insert the microSD card that came with the Gear VR. The new microSD card will automatically mount to your phone, so you just have to put the back cover on and go back to the Oculus app. Once you're back in the app, just tap continue. The app will finish setting up your phone, then tell you to insert your phone into the Gear VR to start your virtual reality experience. But before you do that, make sure you wipe the screen down thoroughly to make sure there aren't any smudges. 
If you try to use the Gear VR with a greasy screen, the images will have streaks in them and will start to give you a headache pretty quickly. Once you've connected your Note 4 to the Gear VR, you can put the protective cover back on. But you don't have to if you don't want to. The protective cover serves three purposes. The first is to protect the lenses when you don't have the Note 4 connected. The second is to protect the phone should you slam your face into something while using the Gear VR in a confined area. And the third is just to look cooler. When you put the Gear VR on for the first time, you'll be given a tutorial to show you how to navigate through menus. The controls sum up as this. Tap the touchpad to select something that you're looking at. Swipe up, down, forward, or backwards on the touchpad to navigate through lists. Tap the back button to go back. And hold the back button to open up the settings for the Gear VR from any screen. From the settings, you can navigate directly to the home screen, enable the camera pass-through which turns your camera on and displays what your camera sees so you can look around at the real world with the headset on, reorient the screen which comes in handy if you accidentally start an app while looking in an awkward direction and want to recenter the app menus and interface to be directly in front of you. You can also enable or disable the do not disturb mode, change the brightness, and change the color temperature in case the bright colors are too hard on your eyes. After the tutorial, you'll be free to check out anything you'd like. Now that the Gear VR is set up, I want to give you all a few quick tips on getting the best experience with the Gear VR. If you notice that you start seeing double of everything on the screen, try adjusting the headset up or down on your face. Once you've optimized the headset's position, go ahead and adjust the focus wheel to fine tune the focus. Second, if you notice that the lenses fog up when you put the headset on, that just means that the lenses are much colder than your face. This usually only happens if you put the headset on right after it's been somewhere cold, like in a car during the winter. Just give the lenses a few minutes to heat up and the fog will go away. You may have to wipe off some leftover moisture from the fog though. After that, you'll be good to go. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it and leave it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the soon to be uploaded Gear VR Hidden Features video, as well as some tutorials. One more thing. If you missed my Note 4 and Gear S videos, you can check those out by clicking the links in the video or the links in the description. That's it for this tech episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.